Man, sometimes it's just rough being a Halo fan. So of course we've all seen this discussion with the recent September blog with 343 talking about like, hey, we're doing some things that are a little bit better and some things that are not so great. And a lot of people, for the most part, are pretty much upset about this point about how Halo is going. I think it's almost going to be at the point now if you ever see Joseph Staten and Sketch sitting down on the couch talking to the community, you like mentally prepare yourself that it's going to be some bad news. And even though 343 spent like 30 minutes sitting down with the community talking about Halo and what's happening moving forward, it still didn't really feel like they really provided much information for us. Yes, they told us about the winter update, they told us about season 3 and that release time frame as well, though we never really got any like true like explanations for things. And I think that's what really is frustrating people right now is that, okay, yeah, we expect to see these updates coming out, okay, there's new content, some minor game modes here and there, but like, why are things so difficult right now? We understand game development is hard. I'm not a game developer. You're who's watching this most likely isn't a game developer. So we can't like assume that we know what's happening at 343, why things are taking so long and who to point the blame at. Just 343 as a whole, yes, they are at fault when it comes to the situation of where Halo Infinite is right now. But I mean, when you start getting down to like, if you're gonna blame the developers, are you blaming Microsoft or blaming Bonnie Ross? Like. You don't know. That's pure speculation, and I'm not really going to get into that in this video. But basically what I'm going to say is that 343 as a whole, whoever's driving the ship, it's their fault. And I guarantee you, those people who are driving the ship understand it is their fault. Also, would say it's just 343's fault in general to the ramp up of the release of this game, where it seemed like 343 kept promising so much about Halo Infinite, right? It seemed to be like the Halo game, the Halo experience to play. It's going to be your everything game. Everyone kind of got that impression. And when we got the game, it was the core experience of Halo, basic multiplayer, battle pass, same game modes we've been playing for the last 20 years kind of thing, but with actual good gameplay mechanics and good graphics. With the ramp up to the release of Halo Infinite, how many times did you hear about how great the slip space engine is, right? We'll have faster updates, faster fixes, more content, easier to work in, and well, they might still be saying that, but from our end, what we're seeing, it definitely isn't that at all. And the crazy thing is, is that 343 was planning to do three month seasons all the way up until August. This is from Joseph Staten. For anybody who's been reading our uh, blogs or has been engaged in Master Chief Collection or frankly has been playing any other live game, they're probably pretty familiar with the way seasons work. But timing wise for us, a season is about three months. That's our goal is to ship a season every three months. So when it comes to campaign co-op, our target is to ship co-op in season two, about three months after launch. And then our goal is to ship Forge in season three, which would be about six months. So it's crazy to think from the time period of August until November, when the game really elite released for the multiplayer side of things, they decided to go, no, we need six months. We need a lot more time, which is, Kind of crazy to think about the how quick of a turnaround that was and when all things are said and done with season two it's going to be like a 10 month season i mean where where did all the problems come from when 343 stated that they wanted to maintain the health of the team and make sure not stressing everybody out too much totally makes sense but like why are these difficulties happening to cause this situation we haven't really got a clear explanation why, besides saying game development is hard. And there's just been so many odd decisions that 343 has made since the release of Halo Infinite. One of my biggest thing is that, well, the Mangler is still in competitive Halo. It's been GA'd for nine months now. Halo Pro Spartan said it best right here. We're on the map Bazaar, where there's a Mangler that spawns right here where he's looking, but in social, there's a sidekick. Why can't they just replace the sidekick with the Mangler since they just provides more of the sandbox. There's only one sidekick map, which is Aquarius. Why not just make that quick switch? I don't understand why it's taking so many months just to take the Mangler out of the competitor. Just take it out. You tried nerfing it. People still don't like it because the two shot drop is too powerful. Then they're looking to also GA the drops, looking to GA the sword as well. Like just, you know, we need some updates here, man. And that's not what we're getting with Halo. It's really weird. And the head of HGS, Tashi, doesn't like GAs either, but doesn't he have the ability to just pass a message on to have a quick little update? Ultimately, we just need to get updates out the door to try to balance these things. So, you know, I don't necessarily blame pros for, you know, trying to can do what they can to uphold the balance. If like, honestly, we haven't upheld our end of the bargain. So I don't blame them. Ultimately, I don't think GAs are good for the scene, 
but they're in my mind a symptom of a bigger problem that we need to solve so now i know tashi doesn't have the direct ability to go into the game change it and then have it fixed for the hcs side of things i mean he puts in a request for the dev team to make updates to and they have to follow through with it but they just haven't which is really odd because it seems like a simple fix we do know that weapon paths can be changed we've seen that right now with yeah, the yapping and the big team battle fiesta slayer like weapons rotate on the weapon pad so i don't see how we can't just make that change super quick i mean they're able to remove maps like remember behemoth was there at launch when it comes to competitive halo they removed that pretty quickly and so i don't know why this hasn't been changed at all it's just so weird other really weird things that like this seems like it's somebody who's steering the ship doesn't truly understand what players want in some capacity like launching Halo Infinite without a Team Slayer playlist, like, what are you doing? That'd be like Call of Duty not releasing with Team Deathmatch. That would be, well, like any shooter ever, not having your basic mode that was most likely your mo most popular mode, a simple Deathmatch, kill the other team mode, which is the basis of all shooters, not there at the launch. It's just so weird. And you know, it was thrown into the quick play playlist. I kind of liked it because I like to have a little variety, but I understand people just want to play Team Slayer. Sometimes I do as well. I don't understand it took so long to get just a Team Slayer playlist put into the game. Another easy slam dunk that just was fumbled by 343 was the implementation of the Team Snipers playlist, which was really weird because when they first launched, I think only about 25% of the time you had the chance of playing with the sniper rifle in Team Snipers. Only until recently, is where now it's shiny snipes and regular snipes with a 5% chance of uh, the skewer and mangler for, I guess, the lulls of the whole thing, but people just quit out of those matches anyways. It's just like, how do you make a Team Snipers playlist with not the intention of playing Team Snipers majority of the time? It's just so weird. And also just having the progression tied to challenges. Uh, we only got like match XP after people were very upset. It was a rather fast turnaround, though it's not exactly like the best way to get, you know, XP for progression. Now they do say they're going to change this, but like the original challenges were really rough as well. Like stop enemy killing sprays. I'm sure we all remember that one for sure. And also like, you know, it's just like, I feel like I'm wasting my time with playing Halo when I have a battle pass to progress through. If I'm not playing for challenges. I feel like I'm extending my time out with this battle pass way longer than it needs to be. So I had to play like these random modes like land grab or, or rumble pit or something like that. Like last night where I just wanted to play the yapping event because it's new, it's fun, get to play with my friends. And then I had like a land grab challenge come up. So I was just gonna sit there until I actually go in and fish up by myself or rumble pit came up as well. So two out, half of my challenges weren't even able to be completed because the like, specific random challenges stuff that we have to do to make progression. And there were multiple times where I wanted to make progression through the Yappening event pass because I've already completed the battle pass for season two, but then there were no Yappening challenges for me to complete, which decided they were going to prioritize event challenges in your queue, but hey, whatever, I guess. I mean, we do have Match XP beta coming in with a winter update, but they said they wanted that to be like the main source of experience to progress through the game. So that's a step in the right direction, but it's like, how do we make up these decisions that make things so much more difficult for us to enjoy the game? Now with the winter update, we are getting Covert Flag, which sounds like a fun mode for sure, but it's not really that exciting. Honestly, it's really just kind of like a ca casual custom game that like I think a community could create really easily if they had the proper tool sets within custom games, which are still not there. Uh, but like I think with like 343, they have the keys to the engine. You know, they can do so much more when it comes to creating unique experiences to play in Halo to get people excited to play. Not these, you know, casual little custom games, which sound fun. I'm definitely gonna play it when it comes out, but I just feel like it's not like a mode that's gonna be like, oh, I need to come back and play Halo, if you know what I mean. We need 343 to kind of focus on making, like creating new experiences that we can't create on the front end side of things. The content that's coming to Halo Limited over the next six months really is like, barely just enough really for just one season if we want to try to keep people's attention i mean we have two forge maps coming in november and then we have two actual dev maps coming in march so four maps in total for the next six months that's not enough content honestly like, like i said this is enough for like one season and then we're getting no new sandbox items like no new weapons no new bits of equipment until the game is a year and a half into its release and like i said earlier i thought the slip space engine was supposed to be able to provide more content was supposed to make bug fix and change it super fast on the fly and be more agile and it seems like we're just the slowest it's ever been in halo's franchise 
I know the biggest pain point for a lot of people right now is that the cancellation of campaign co-op, that split screen co-op is not going to be happening. But the weird thing is people are playing co-op right now within Halo Infinite right now. Like it's a possibility. It works in the game. The person who posted this on Twitter showcasing that how to do it, they showcased the steps and they said like, yeah, the progression works fine. The cutscenes are working fine. Like everything it's working fine from their end. They don't see why this is going to be completely canceled the dev time was put into it now i'm glad that 343 is putting a lot of the resources into putting more effort into making sure the game is functioning properly that we have since seasonality hitting more often but like why is co-op campaign for split screen not happening why is this not happening we were just told we're this is not happening but why is it because of the xbox one limitations is it because of the issue becomes like no Spartan left behind saving situation or something. We had no explanation. It was just told it's not going to be happening anymore. And split screen is an important part. It's still niche. I don't really bother with split screen. I think the last time I played it was when I forced my wife to play co-op uh, split screen CE for my birthday back in 2020 because, well, there's nothing else you really could have done back in 2020 or 2021. Plus, back in 2018, they said they had four player split screen working. So what happened in the last four years to make it so then split screen just can't be a possibility i don't understand they didn't explain that's what we need more open communication that's why it seems like with this september blog update that we got from 343 that it's more just that them telling us what's happening and we never really got a true explanation of why things are happening we got high level goals uh we got an idea with the roadmap what to look forward to when it comes to the actual content so that's basically what we need but not really true communication which is really frustrating on our end one part i thought they completely failed when it comes to the communication is forge like i know they did say that they have more to talk about it later but the weird thing is guys think about this this is the first time we've officially seen anything in forge or heard anything about forge the game's been out for almost a year now i think we're about nine ten months now into this uh, game now and the only thing we knew about Forge officially is that there was a redo and undo button. Everything else you've learned about Forge, everything you've seen have been leaks until this video. Like just let that sink in. Like it's kind of weird that we actually really think about like they've been so silent on Forge. They've had nothing to say about it. Nothing to get us hyped or excited or give spark or interest in Halo the whole time. And even when they did actually finally come out and talk about Forge and showcase some sh screenshots, like, yeah, they showcase like, oh, so many more items you can put in and stuff like that. But there was nothing really there to show like any cool new features or anything that's coming along with Forge or anything that we can do day one with Forge as well to get us excited. Like, is there going to be a file share? That's going to be very important for Forge to have that be a healthy game community where people actually will bother, you know, creating these modes and maps and stuff like that. Is there going to be an update the waypoint where you can download the stuff from the website like you could with Halo 5? Is there going to be like a Forge playlist with like all these, you know, Forge council members that have been playing around with Forge for years now at this point, creating stuff in Forge as well. We do know that the Forge council are creating maps. Is there going to be like a Forge playlist in November when that comes out? They didn't say anything about that. Is there going to be anything like day one for people to jump in and play around with Forge for the more casual audience? It'd be like, look at the power that Forge can offer besides like uh, Argyle and Detachment. I mean, this is, I mean, they, they didn't really say anything. Again, 343 had the best opportunity right there. You had the entire community watching and listening to what you're saying, and you still didn't provide us much of a reason to want to get excited about this game. There's also one moment within this video that really sounded confusing. And it seems like, again, like more like tone deaf, almost communication from 343. We also want an, ex an experience that's competitive and fair. We are a very competitive game. That's our DNA. That's who we are, right? You go back all the way to the very first Halo, right? Multiplayer. I mean, it is it is a highly competitive game. And so we want an experience where players can expect that the game is competitive and fair. And skill and teamwork should be a path to victory, right? The path to victory. Um, that doesn't mean abandoning social players. That's not what that means. But it is about fairness and competition. I've been seeing the community run with this, saying that Halo only cares about the competitive side of things. I think what he was really saying is that Halo is a competitive game. You work to play against each other. 
best player wins kind of situation. That's genuine, that's definitive definition, textbook definition of competitive. Yes, it's a competitive game, but we can play in a social way. And we, he said like back in CE, it's a competitive game where the original devs of Bungie said that they wanted to make a party game in Halo which with for a first person shooter, which makes more sense than what they're saying here. Again, like when you say the word competitive in a shooter, you think it brings up the idea of people talking about like HCS, sweaty boys training for million dollar tournaments and stuff like that, which is a very niche community, which that would say generally does lend to its better gameplay within the competitive side of things. But you can't say that Halo is a competitive game because people think of it being much more like sweaty ranks and stuff like that when people want to play social they want to hear social they want to hear party again that's what I'm talking about saying tone deaf where it's like I understand what you're saying but you're saying it wrong because when you're saying competitive and fair you're saying like you know you want to make sure that everyone has an even footing and so then that it comes down to player skill about who wins to have a fair fun match though to me it sounds like they're kind of sticking with their guns when it comes to skill based matchmaking especially on the social side of things it does seem like maybe it's a little bit looser when it comes to social compared to rank but basically it feels like the same experience like i'm matching onyx players all the time like in big team battle i matched against mickwin who is one of the best halo pros of all time in big team battle like it just seems ridiculous i come across guys with onyx emblems in their nameplates because you know they grind the game up that hard but the thing is like we're playing social game modes. We don't need to keep it so competitive and so fair that it feels like it's the same experience every single time. That could also play into why the game got boring so fast is because we're playing the same game modes we've been playing for the last 20 years and every game is kind of just playing out the same due to skill-based matchmaking. Though there is some hope to be had with this game. One, I do like how they're trying to force themselves to get into seasonality. Guys, if you've ever worked in an office or done any form of project management, you know if you're managing multiple teams or have to get take feedback from multiple teams, everyone's issue is the biggest issue and needs to be fixed right now. It's up to the management at 343 to manage the game and prioritize things to where they go with the biggest issue, fix that, and work their way down. If 343 gets into the cycle of six month seasons, there's gonna be constant workloads being thrown onto it. But like, well, we have six months. We'll put that in season three, four, five, six, and stuff like that. Getting into that motion of doing three month seasons is gonna be crucial for this game when it comes to content and news and information for me as well. So I'll be able to talk about things more than just like the initial month of a new season. It looks like desync and also a lot of the issues with the multiplayer are going to be fixed up with Halo Infinite. Huge issues with packet loss and ping fluctuations are plaguing Halo Infinite right now. We have Halo Pro snake by tweeting this picture where we had over 21,000 ping. Like, how is that possible? Another Halo Pro Lucid pointed this out too, where he's been having a lot of issues. This has been going on even before the NA Super that was going on for Halo Infinite, just the packet loss issue, the ping fluctuations. I've even ex been experiencing this as well. This is an example I'm talking about right here where I was playing the other night just with my brother online and I get this guy coming right behind me. I thrust backwards, go for the back melee, teleport backwards, and he still gets the kill on me. It's like this kind of stuff has been plaguing this game so much. And even when I was playing the yapping the other night, like my pings, kept fluctuating from like 30 to like 120. Like what's going on, man? Like, come on, have you ever been like Comcast support? Like all you need to do is just unplug your router, plug it back in, things seem to work pretty well. I think we just need to do that with the Halo Infinite servers or something weird needs to happen. But it does look like there's a light at the end of the tunnel when it comes to getting these fixes in. We understand that there are moments in our gameplay when it's really hard to see uh, differences between what you're experiencing uh, what you think you're experiencing and what the game is telling you is happening, right? And so I'm talking about what we call our UCN issues, right? Um, sort of M M MP gameplay performance issues. We we really are going to be focused on on addressing those. So yeah, he's talking about that's desync. I mean, he didn't say it. Again, that's a problem with the communication like we're talking about right now with 343, but he's talking about fixing desync. He's singing, talking about fixing packet loss and ping fluctuations right there. Now, when is that going to happen? We don't know. And that's the hardest part that's that we just have to kind of just like hope for the best but that to me it still says there is some form of hope to be had with halo infinite halo if it's the first halo game that's from 343 where people want more of it 
We've had these issues with Halo 4 and 5 where people just didn't like the gameplay. Fundamentally, it's broken, it's bad, it's not Halo, all that kind of stuff. But the Halo Infinite is the first game where people actually really want more of it because the core gameplay, as we all agree, is amazing. So as long as we have stuff to do in the game, this game still has the possibility of having a huge bounce back. Now, I think this all kind of tilts on to the release of the rumored Battle Royale that's coming in fall of 2023. Again, that's all speculation and rumors, but it's the worst kept secret in gaming right now. I think 343 really wants to focus on trying to fix up the game to have it in a good state. So when that Battle Royale releases and you have this huge influx of the casual gaming audience, huge influx of content creators and streamers playing the game, you want to make sure that it is running properly. Because you can't be having pack loss, you can't be having ping fluctuations, you can't be having these weird issues that keep happening with Halo Infinite, you can't be having desync. You gotta make sure that things are working right when that game when that game mode drops, because that's gonna be thousands, hundreds of thousands of people are gonna jump in and play the game. And if it's playing like how it is right now, that's gonna be the true death of Halo. I also wanna take a little time to just touch on the hashtag Fire343. I understand the frustrations of that and but I think that there really couldn't really be much done right there for the most part. I think because 343 is just an extension of Microsoft. They are the team that works on Halo that's part of Microsoft. So I think this issue with Halo Infinite kind of just runs up the chain of command really to where it's mainly just Microsoft failing to support Halo and putting the right people in place. So say if you want to fire 343 right now, right? To clear it all out, kick everyone out of the building, get a whole new set of people in. So you say you just want development to completely stop on Halo Infinite for like at least a year if you're gonna completely clean house. I mean, that sounds pretty bad for Halo. That sounds way more detrimental to me than anything else. Are you talking about firing like the upper management like Bonnie Ross and some other people? I mean, again, that would drastically slow down the development a lot of this game because I know our biggest issue is that we don't have enough stuff to do in the game. We want more content. If you kick out the captain of the ship, well then who's going to be driving the ship? It's going to take some time to figure that out. So the quickest solution is really to kind of keep 343 where they're at and then just try to power through this whole situation. And once we get into a good rhythm, we can kind of start taking a step back and realize, okay, who to point the fingers at and who's to blame. But right now, we just need to keep this ship from sinking. Now is not the time to have a mutiny. But am I frustrated at the way things are going right now with 343 and Halo? Absolutely. There definitely is some form of mismanagement that's happening with Halo Infinite. That's very clear. We can easily just see that from what we've been getting in the game and how the communication's been going. But I still fully believe that 343 can get Halo Infinite into a good state. It's just going to take some time. And from what it sounds like from the team right here, that towards the fall of 2023, is when things should be in a good state which again that's a two full years of development after release after waiting six years for this game to come out it's basically gonna be like almost eight years of development for halo Infinite just to get it where it needs to be if you want a detailed breakdown of everything that's happening with the winter update and season three check out this video right here thank you very much for watching my rant video guys and i'll catch you all in the next one peace out